AWS just introduced savings plans for AWS Compute Services. This is a big deal for those that are responsible for the cost in an AWS account of pretty much any size. Today with RIs, this usually involves someone getting deep into a spreadsheet, having to map RIs to individual mapped instances, and then checking in and re-upping them. They're also pretty inflexible unless you plan for a more flexible RI, but then you don't get the same amount of savings. It's just a pain. So that's where savings plans come in. Savings plans are a commitment to use a certain level of compute measured in dollars per hour over a certain period of time. That time being one or three years, just like traditional reserved instances. Anything over that level of compute that is bought at a discounted rate is then charged at traditional on-demand rates. This gives you the ability to plan with the whole of your AWS compute footprint on purchasing savings plans instead of looking at it on an instance by instance level. They've also built some new tooling with the savings plan dashboard that can be used to help pick savings plans that would be right for your org based on past usage. So there's actually two different types of savings plans. The first one is much more flexible. It's a compute savings plan. You still have to lock into a one or three year term. You still have to pick a purchase type of all upfront, partial upfront or no upfront. But for services, this actually applies to any EC2 instance and things that run on EC2 instances and Fargate. It's any instance family, it's any tenancy, so shared or dedicated, it's any operating system, Windows, Windows, Linux, anything you can run on EC2 instance. It's any region as well, except mainland China, and you can get a max savings of about 66%. EC2 savings plans are a little bit more in line with what we know as traditional reserved instances. So you still get flexibility when it comes to tenancy and operating system, but you're actually locked into a specific instance family and a specific region. You don't have to pick a specific instance type, so you don't have to say C5 2x large, but you still need to specify you want to buy compute for the C5 instance family. And then you also are specifying a specific region when you do this. So you'll be buying, let's say, a savings plan for a C5 instances in the U.S. East one region. But you do get a higher potential max savings at 72%. So for some caveats, RDS, Elasticash, Elasticsearch, anything that's not EC2 or Fargate that have had reserve instances in the past still have reserve instances without savings plans. So you're, you're still going to have to manage RIs like you have traditionally there. Um, you're still going to have to lock in AWS for one to three years. There's no flexibility around terms. And you also still need to prepay to get the most savings. For a lot of organizations, this can be pretty difficult getting approval to write that big check for an all upfront RI purchase. So a lot of times uh, organizations will just go with no upfront, but then you still won't get the most savings. And then also burst in dynamic workloads uh, might still be served better by spot instances. Spot instances still have a higher level of potential savings at 90%. I plan to make a whole video breakdown of the cost differences between each savings plan and with spot instances, so I'll link that here and in the description when that's ready. So are reserve instances dead? Well, yeah, for EC2 mostly. Your current RIs are still good and are still going to live out their term. You can still actually buy new RIs for EC2 instances, but the only reason I can think of to buy RIs today is if you have an accounting structure that's built around RIs and your company is just super organized and you have a really good system for reserve instances. But I've never seen anyone's account that organized once you get over a dozen instances. Savings plans should be the no-brainer for all future RI purchases on EC2. They're much simpler, they're much more straightforward, and they actually account for the same level of savings that you get with traditional RIs. Overall, this feels like a positive change and hopefully many engineers will be able to stop spending hours figuring out an RI strategy. These savings, although they are more flexible, still require a long-term commitment to AWS. There's no getting out of that. But this should alleviate some of the confusion around AWS cost management. Hopefully this at least explains the basics of savings plans. Check out the link below for a post on this and with some more information with some other links. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.